I'm speaking with Susan Reed Jones, who's the president of the South Carolina Beekeepers Association, and we are at the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center for your annual meeting. Yes. Pretty exciting. We're excited that you're here. And y'all are almost 50 years old, and what is the purpose of the South Carolina Beekeepers? And do y'all interact with the community or just with other beekeepers? Tell me something about your mission. Yes, the mission of the South Carolina Beekeepers Association is to educate our beekeepers as to how to be the best stewards of our wonderful pollinators, the honeybees, and as well to help them stay current on the most recent scientific research that's going on across the United States and the world, really. And it's more challenging now than it was 20 or 30 years ago because we have some imported pests, I believe. Yes. Uh, in the 80s, we had two significant pests come into the United States, the small hive beetle and the varroa mite. And those have vector diseases and problems that have caused almost a, a half 50% decline in honeybees in the United States. Wow. So we've had to actively manage them, manage our colonies to, to uh, keep them healthy and to maintain our populations. Um, but y'all do education, y'all have meetings and each individual group, and I think there are about 30 of y'all, kind of have their own schedule on how to do things. You don't tell them what to do, but there are guidelines that they must follow, I believe. Right, the South Carolina Beekeepers Association is an umbrella organization, basically. We kind of help coordinate and, uh, the activities across South Carolina for individual local beekeeping clubs and communities. So we help feed information to them, then they feed it to their people, and it all becomes a happy family. And then we meet for a summer conference uh, every summer, the last, the third week in July, uh, where we kind of do a three-day intensive of all kinds of sessions and, and classes and workshops and field uh, uh, exploring bee colonies, um, hands-on activities, so that we can help better support locally our beekeepers. So then they can go and give that to their communities. And you mentioned the master beekeeping program, which is um, kind of fascinating sounding. I mean, that really is for people who want to um, get the basics at a more granular level and then kind of split off into more um, subsets. That's correct. Um, our master beekeeping program has four levels. You begin at the beginner level, you don't know anything about bees, and you start by taking the beginner instruction, you take a written test and an actual field test. Okay. But then once you get to the next level, the yes. journeyman level, we do that from the state organization. We offer usually a class one time a year in the fall, and then we do testing at our conferences, our summer conference. Then we usually do a one to one and a half day meeting in the last weekend in February. So we meet twice a year statewide, but then the rest of the meetings are locally, on the local level. So the master beekeepers, their reason for being is somewhat separate, and so what are they charged with doing? The master beekeepers themselves, those that have achieved master beekeeper, are really our instructors. They're the ones who oh. have been teaching for a number of years. Like for myself, I started beekeeping almost 20 years ago. I never dreamed that I would be in the position I'm in um, because I took it up kind of as a hobby and it just kind of took off. Well, you told me that as a young girl, one of your cousins was stung by a bee and unfortunately had um, a reaction and you were like, no way, no yeah. way. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> I was like, I'm like never gonna be a beekeeper, no way. <laughs> but stranger things have happened, I guess. And I, I started beekeeping and I was meticulous trying to stay protected. I went two years before I was ever stung by a bee and it was a non-event, honestly. And so after that, it was like, ha! So, I can do this. Yeah, yeah, I can do it. And the nice thing is, I think one of the fun things about being here in downtown Columbia is that a lot of people don't realize that you can keep bees in an urban setting. And I think here, y'all have hives all over the place and people just walking back and forth and there's no problem whatsoever. Do you know, we have people who keep bees in apartment complexes no. in downtown on top of rooftops. There's a whole um, business that has bees, corporations, they'll, they'll put place beehives on corporate campuses. There's, Beehives are everywhere. You just don't know it. You know, a lot of times we kind of hide them on purpose because we don't want the public to be afraid. Bees are not something they're to be respected, not feared. And and they're, they're actually our friends. Without them, we wouldn't have the food to eat that we have. 
you have a, your own personal story about what happened when somebody kind of dropped a beehive off at your house and what happened in your garden. Would you share that with me? Yes, I had a garden. My husband was a beekeeper first because remember I was scared of bees. And when, um, let's just say his colonies didn't make it one winter. And the next year, my bees went from producing, I had about a 20 foot row of cantaloupe that produced so much cantaloupe that I was taking it and giving it away by the big Rubbermaid container sure. store, um, because of the pollination. When the bees died oh. or died off the next year, I may, might have gotten six cantaloupe. Yeah. I mean, the difference was huge. So pollination is a big thing. And also it's just so much fun to go out in your yard or your garden and see these active bees because unlike our native bees, which normally overwinter maybe with a gravid female, um, our bees, anytime the weather's nice, which in South Carolina is like da 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 yes. da 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 12 months um, a year. Yeah. And so, um, so if you, even if you don't want to keep bees, could you go to your local beekeeping association meetings just to enjoy learning more about them? Absolutely. Every club would welcome people to come. In fact, there may even be some beekeepers um, who need a place to put bees. And if you want bees, you could say, oh. hey, could we work out a relationship where you could put bees here and okay. pollinate their garden, you know? Okay. So. And also, um, I learned that people within communities can contact their local group and ask them to come and talk at a high school or a community organization. I didn't realize how much outreach y'all can do. Oh, absolutely. Um, part of our master beekeeping program has a public service credit component, which encourages our folks to go speak to garden clubs and schools and boys and Girl Scouts and church groups, whatever. Um, our people are happy to go um, present beekeeping and share that kind of information. Um, so if you're interested, the best place to do is to go on our website and look there. We have a place where you can find a club in your area contact them and then you can take it from there. And if you have a swarm and you're concerned about it, I think that's where you go and you can get information about the best way to um, get some help from them to help resolve that situation. Absolutely, we've got beekeepers that'll be more than happy to come get free bees. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us once again, if people want to know more about your association, um, where do they go? Our website is SC for South Carolina, SC State beekeepers.com. Okay. Uh, you can find all the different places there to find local clubs, what to do for a swarm if you need a beekeeper, or to contact us if you have a basic question. Typically, that's our role is to help connect you with somebody that can help you. And as a clips and um, extension um, person, I'd like to say that um, Ben Powell, who's our state beekeeper, um, has just brought so much information to our viewers, and we so appreciate that. And then today I met um, Brad Cabot, mm -hmm. who is our regulatory person, who sounds like he's so willing to come and help people. And I understand now that there's a 4-H program for pollinators for young children. It's just, it's growing. It's wonderful. It's exciting. And the main thing is to take the fear away and spread the information on how extremely important these insects are to our happiness and our life. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing this information. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming.